privilege of talking to Fran Liebowitz, a writer known not only for her wit and talent, but also for her sensible approach to such diverse goals as how to be an heiress, how to be a landlord, and how to bring up your child to be a mortician. Her numerous dislikes, ranging from Muzak to the word relationship, are all definitively discussed in her books Metropolitan Life and the more recent Social Studies. Fran, I'd like to get something straight right off the bat. I understand that one of the things you dislike is appearing on TV. Now, why is that? Oh, no, I don't dislike appearing on TV. I, it's my hobby. It's becoming my career. Uh -huh. Oh, no, I like being on TV. It makes me feel more American. It's like owning a car. Do you own a car? Yes. I guess I want to feel as American as possible under the circumstances. You think that America is a great country and you're proud to be a member of it? Oh, delighted. Uh-huh. Well, we're delighted to have you. Um, but you wrote an article about how to be a talk show host, and it wasn't entirely complimentary. Oh, yes. No, I don't, I'm not a host. I'm a guest. Uh -huh. no, that's the difference. Although I would like to be a talk show host. I would like to have my own talk show, uh, but no guests. Oh, you would talk. You right. do a I, monologue. That's right. Just my, The monologue is my favorite form of speech. You know, I wouldn't talk. I would have no guests because I'm not interested enough in other people to ask them questions about their life. Uh, on my friend's birthday, they could come on. That would be it. That's an interesting idea, and I think one that's going to be successful, perhaps taken up. Have you had any no, offers? No, no offers. No one's taken up. What about screenplays? If you don't like dialogue, how, you, how did people expect you to write it? I don't know. I never wrote a screenplay. I've never been offered yeah, I know. screenplays to write. Um, I don't think writing has much to do with movies, do you? you know, the reason that I don't write screenplays is not an aversion to money. I have quite a fondness for money. The reason I don't write screenplays is because it's too collaborative a form, and um, I don't work well with others. Uh, the writer is not in control. You know, there are unfortunately actors, directors, and um, that's why I would do it. Well, director has pretty great control. Perhaps you'd consider that? No, because the director has to talk to the actors. I see. So that's a major disadvantage of being a director. And you don't like talking to actors or anybody else? Oh, no, the people I like to talk to. I wouldn't say actors are first on my list. I a lot of people would be interested to know how you became a funny writer. Now, a number of um, amusing writers have major drawbacks, like um, Art Bookwald, who was an orphan, and Russell Baker, who was semi-orphaned, and um, Pope was a hunchback, and Swift was crazy, and of course, Woody Allen's problems are universally known. Did you have similar shortcomings? Or? No, I have none whatsoever. No. I don't have any dramatic problems like that. No. You had an easygoing life? No. But no one has an easygoing life. I mean, it's not just Alexander Pope who has problems, you know. Everyone, yes. Uh, no, I, I have, um, are you asking me why, why this came about? You know, Perhaps, you mean, you mean, yes. How could I be if funny even without a club foot? Is that the that's, question? That's right. I see. That's the question. Um, well, it didn't make Byron that entertaining. I, um, I don't know. I, it was just, it's like being taught. It's something you're born with. You don't have to have a club foot. You were always funny. I was, I'm always highly entertaining in my opinion. I mean, uh, things that when you're a child, people don't think you're witty. Mm. No, they think you're fresh. Yes. And then when you're older, you get to be called witty, and then after witty, you get called fresh again. That's um, the wages did, of success. Did you ever go through an earnest phase, an earnest adolescence, perhaps? No, I had a dreadful adolescence. But see, I don't... No, I had a horrible adolescence. But I don't think that makes me unusual. It's not as unusual to have a horrible adolescence as to have a club foot. Um, everyone... I think at any given high school in America, there are only two people enjoying high school. One is the captain of the football, football team, and the other one is his girlfriend. I was neither one of these two people, so I had pretty... I'm surprised you weren't captain of the football team. You seem to like... I am whatever the opposite of a sports fan is. I am that. Uh, I once was suspended from school for sneaking out of a pep rally. I was, con I guess, con uh, accused of having insufficient pep, which is true to this day. Uh-huh. So that, um, no, I didn't have a very pleasant adolescence. And I, no, I, I don't remember an earnest phase in my life. Oh, you never wrote lonely poetry, wrote of a romantic I'm bend? Not, no, I... I confess, and I use the word in its fullest sense, to having written poetry as a teenager, but um, it was uh, neither earnest nor romantic. Was it Dorothy Parker-esque? No, no, it was, it was, um, it was just uh, angry. It was the kind of the, the uh, literary equivalent of breaking windows, you know, which is a good sport for adolescents. Did you break the windows in an amusing and new fashion? No, I was a terrible poet, I must say. Uh, I happen to have actually been an excellent reader of poetry, so I, I would give poetry readings down here at the Village Vanguard. I used to do poetry when I was 18. I used to give poetry readings. And I was often asked to submit my work by editors of poetry magazines who would think I was a great poet, then get the work and realize that I was merely a great reader. So, uh, no. I they didn't realize that you were reading other people's poetry. No, I was reading my poetry. It's just that oh. I, I'm excellent at reading 
you know, the poetry. I'm just, when you look at it on the page, it lost all its glimmer. So there was no turning point in your life when you knew that you were destined to write funny pieces, or did you always know? Was it thrust upon you? What happened? No, I always wanted to be a writer from the time I was little. The only time yes. I remember not wanting to be a writer was I had a brief flirtation with wanting to be a toll taker. I was under the impression they kept the money. Uh -huh. uh, so I said, this is a great job. You know, you get to wear a uniform, which is very appealing at the age of eight. Uh, still to very many people, very appealing now. And um, I thought they kept the money. I, actually, they do sometimes, I realize. Or a tax collector. Um, no, I didn't, I didn't know about taxes. And I, I didn't know about taxes. In fact, too much problem life came out. Now I know far more about taxes than I ever wanted to know. And you'd really like to be a tax collector? <clears throat> I would like to at least uh, keep a portion of my income, yes. Uh, when did your pieces start becoming amusing? Were you writing epigrammatic essays in your adolescence when everyone else was writing mush? Um, well, I wrote similar things, yeah, when I was a teenager. No one paid any attention to them, however. Mm. I didn't get paid for them, which remained true until my first book came out. Um, no, I, I always wrote in this form. You know. I wrote other things, too, when I was a little kid. I wrote stories. And things like that. What sort of subjects did you use to write on? Were they uh, observations on the passing scene? or? Yeah, they were, except the passing scene in Mars New Jersey was not as um, mesmerizing as it became in later life. Were your friends be afraid of becoming grist for your mill? I mean, you can be very intimidating, I think, as, as a you mean in high humorist, school? yes. Um, no. No, because my targets in high school were the, were the targets of my uh, peers, uh -huh. you know, teachers. You know, no one ever became unpopular in high school for making fun of teachers. What so about I, the teachers? How did they take it? Um, not well. Not well. I, in fact, the gym teachers in my high school banded together um, and s expended all their efforts on punishing me for various infractions. And I guess when you were thrown off the pep rally, you were quite relieved. It was no punishment at all. Oh, no, I wasn't thrown out of the pep rally. I snuck out of the pep rally. I was thrown out of school. Oh. I was always relieved to be suspended from school. Suspended from school in my high school meant three days you were not allowed to go to school. I was <laughs> delighted to have these three days. You also received a zero in every class mm -hmm. for the days you weren't there. Since I received zeros in classes when I was attending, it didn't matter, and it meant I could sleep later. Is that why you didn't go to college? Because of the zeros, or...? Choice? It was a combination. Oh, no. Well, no, I didn't go to college because I didn't finish high school. It follows. I also then didn't go to law school. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I, I wasn't thrown out of uh, high school for just for bad grades. My grades weren't that bad at that point. They were a few years before that worse. Um, I think it was a combination. I was thrown out of private school, so you didn't have to do anything very uh, major to get kicked out. You know, In public uh -huh. school, you have to be head of teacher. The school I went to, just not wearing pumps to chapel was sufficient to have you thrown out of school. Well, that doesn't sound like then it could have been a Catholic school because nobody could wear pumps any time, right? I uh, know, it was an Episcopalian school. So you can see that I really wasn't, didn't fit in. This Do you get into trouble now for what you write? Do you get angry letters from the morticians' union or from heiresses or popes? Oh, no. I would be extremely upset if I ever got an angry letter from an heiress. No, I don't get angry letters from heiresses, but I, I get uh, quite a bit of hate now. But it's really uh -huh. not so much from people who read my books as, as more from people see me on TV. Oh, you're more offensive on TV? I seem to be more offensive in person. No, I think it's that people don't... Uh, the or they don't read books at all. They just well, watch TV. Well, people don't spend $10 for something that they aren't pretty sure they're going to like. But people, as you know, flip on a TV for no reason at all. And what are these letters? Have they threatened you? I get quite a, a bit of mail from uh, Nazis. This is a quite common thing among Jews. If you have a Jewish name, you get mail from Nazis. I get a lot of mail from prisoners. Um, oh, of a threatening nature, or...? No, uh, unfortunately not. You know, more, more kind of a romantic nature, yes. I get a lot of love letters from prisoners. Have you, do you answer the mail? No. I don't answer even my real mail. I don't answer mail from my aunt, let alone from someone serving time for rape. Oh. Now, you say that you don't like to write, and you say that you don't make enough money at it. Um, why don't you get a proper job that would pay you enough money and that you'd like? Oh, no, I, I don't like to write. I do make enough money at it now. No. I just don't get to keep the money. That's the problem. Oh. You know, I have uh, many people that, who supposedly work for me who take a major percentage of my income, and uh, the rest goes to write directly to the federal government. My checks are sent directly to the federal government, then I get back. You know, I'm not withholding taxes, I'm withholding income. What are the, some, some of the problems that are entailed in being a funny writer as opposed to a normal, I don't want to say serious writer, what's the opposite? Of a funny an, writer? Of an unfunny writer. Yes, that's enough, I would say. Um, a solemn writer, perhaps. Yes. I, um, I, I, it's hard to write anything, I think. It's hard to write things that are not funny, but it's harder to write things that are funny. Um, 
because, and you can prove that by the fact that hardly anyone does. That whenever you see very few people doing something, it's because it's hard to do. It's hard to Or perhaps um, something they don't look forward to doing. Right, well, it's the same thing. I mean, it's hard to do or because it's lazy. Unpleasant, I mean. It is unpleasant. It's, it's like coal mining, you know, without the glamour, I think. It's very difficult to, it's not difficult to talk in a funny way. That's a natural, it isn't? no, that's a natural gift. Um, but it's difficult to write in a funny way because all the things you have at your disposal when you talk, such as inflection of your voice, you can yeah. stop. You can you can't do that when you write. You have, you're relying on punctuation, which is pretty slender thread to hang this on. What about the difficulties outside of the writing itself? Are there any? I mean, do you find, for instance, that no, the rest of my life is problem free? Well, maybe there is something to be said then. I find that nobody takes you seriously, and they think you're joking when, in fact, you're quite earnest. Uh, sometimes, or sometimes people think I'm quite earnest when in fact I'm joking. That happens more. Yes. Yes, much more often. That can get you into trouble. Occasionally, I don't, I get into trouble. Okay, I don't know what you mean by getting in trouble. I mean, since I'm not <coughs> in school anymore, I don't have any teachers to get in trouble with. I don't know what you mean. I get in a certain amount of trouble, but it's not as severe as it used to be. One of your ambitions is to be pope. Would you give up funny, being funny, in order to be pope, or would you write amusing papal bulls? I don't think I could top this Pope for writing amusing papal bulls. I would, um, no, I would instantaneously give up my life of fun and frolic to be worshipped by millions. Do you do anything? Or just oh, receive the I would the do worship? what the Pope does. You know, yeah. I would come out of the balcony and go, I think, I really think I'd be excellent at this job. I have a flair for it, I think. Do you practice? Um, no, but I imagine it. I fantasize about being the Pope, but I don't practice. And, uh, no reforms you'd like to effect? Oh, no, I'm, I have no interest whatsoever in religion. I have only interest in, in the spectacle of it. You know, it's not a religious desire to be the Pope. What about being an actress playing the Pope? No, that's Would that not suffice? Enough. No, certainly not. How about a movie star? They have a great deal of power. Movie stars have good lives, yeah. They have fun. I, I think movie star life is and a fun And they do life. that, too. They do that, too, and the people kneel. And, um, yeah, there's, I think there's a fun act, but it's not as good as being Pope. Um, what about being an empress? empress is that yes. for a political reason or no, the same deal no, on the balcony, huh? The same. It's all the same. Since most people have very dull jobs, sitting at a desk, uh, for amusement they like to go off and, and have a good laugh. So you have good laughs for your profession. What do you do for relaxation? Do you go and try and find something tedious to do? Oh, no, writing is, I, you know, I have a very dull job sitting at a desk too. It isn't fun writing this stuff. Uh -huh. uh, no, for relaxation, I sleep. I like to get right to the point. I don't fool around with halfway. That's relaxation, I'm saying. That's right. That's the most relaxation like, you can have. Now, you've recently been camping. That's not a typically uh, Leibowitzian occupation. What uh, camping it? outside, yes. Uh, oh. Camping inside is, is a rather typical Leibowitzian occupation. I'm sorry. What was a nice girl like you doing on a camping site? Um, it's, uh, getting publicity, which is, uh, which is a Leibowitzian activity, in case you haven't noticed. It was for, to be on the cover of this magazine called Outside Magazine. Uh, they thought it would be funny for me to go camping. It's a sort of idea that magazine editors, I think, frequently have. So that's what I was doing. Did any adventures befall you, or misadventures more likely? In Fortunately your case? not. Fortunately, no adventures. I, I made it quite clear that I wanted no adventures to befall me. And um, I, I really wanted to go like to the Bahamas on this camping trip, but we went instead to, um, I think it was Delaware, I'm not sure. It was a few hours drive from here. Um, no, I made them pick me up late, and we just drove out there, and they had the guy, the photographer, cooked steaks, and he brought a very... Um, a noble bottle of wine, and uh, no, I was bored more than anything. Sounds like camping for the afternoon. Yes, it was. It was camping. Oh, oh no, we, no, we slept out. No, we slept in a oh, tent. Oh, that's legitimate. Um, I, I found that quite uncomfortable and unattractive. I mean, sleeping in a tent with two people that you don't know, um, it wasn't very attractive. Uh, I mean, they were pretty nice people, but it wasn't. It was, it was, the tent was the size of my old apartment. Mm -hmm. It was neater than my old apartment, um, but unfortunately, it was uh, outside. And there was nothing to do. At 7 o'clock it got dark. We were sitting around. I, I didn't know these people. I didn't really know. I, I suggest we go to the movies. They said this wasn't a legitimate camping activity. Um, I didn't really like being outside. There was no place to sit. And it was dark. All no dark. lights. Now, um, going back to your writing, some of us suspect that there's a formula to humor. Is there any? Do you, is there something you fall back on when you have writer's block? Are there tricks to making epigrams? Um, there are few. There, unfortunately, I would love to discover a formula. Anyone who has one, I wish they would send it to me. There are little tricks. Yeah. You haven't patented anything secretly? Patented? No, I haven't even discovered. Uh, no, uh, there are little tricks you learn, little techniques, but that you learn that in any 
in any, not just writing, in anything, I suppose, but they're, they're not substantial enough to fall back on, really, when you have writer's block. Are they tricks for getting an idea? Oh, no, there's no. Getting an idea isn't really such a bad you know, such oh, problem. Oh, no? Uh, Bernard Malamud complained once that that was a major uh, difficulty. I would agree it is a major difficulty for Bernard Malamud, but for me, it's no problem at all. What about reading? Who inspires you? Um, I don't know. I, I read all the time, and uh, I, I read about 4,000 times more than I write. Uh, but I can't say really that, pe that people inspire me. I mean, I can't think of a direct inspiration. I remember reading one of your essays and thinking, that sounds like a contemporary Swift. Well, thank you. But I, it's, it, you know, I, I'm sure that writers are influenced by what they read, and some writers are kind of deliberately influenced, and, and I, it's unconscious. I don't know who influences mm. me. Uh, do you read junk? Yes, I read everything. I'm a totally promiscuous reader. I'm a s slut of literature. I read absolutely anything. I like junk. Mm -hmm. I like mysteries. Um, I like all kinds of junk. I like, you know, novels about, um, you know, that rip the lid off things. I like all novels that rip the lid off industries, uh, you know, rips the lid off Hollywood, or rips the lid off. Oh. Uh, I like those kind of books. Those are historical novels. Oh no, no, no not so. historical. I don't like historical novels, and I don't. There's certain junk forms I don't like. I don't like gothic novels, and I don't like romantic novels. But Harley I, Quinn romances. Uh, yeah, I don't but like. But they those would be fun to take off on, wouldn't they? It's too easy. No, they already are takeoffs. I mean, there's something yes. you can't satirize. You cannot satirize a Harley Quinn romance. I mean, it's a, it's too close already to. Uh, but I do. I like quite a bit of junk. Oh, you get a lot of mileage out of contemporary society. Do you think you would fit in in any other era or any other country? I don't feel I fit into contemporary society, so um, I think I would fit in just as but well or badly. But you're a spokesman way. for it. Well, that yeah, but that means you don't fit into it. You know, I don't know. I, you're an I don't think that I have no nostalgia. You know, I don't think that any other time was better than this time, um, and I think this time is dreadful, uh, and I think it will only get worse. Well, its dreadfulness provides you with a lot of fuel. Um, are there other eras that you think would lend themselves to your kind of writing? Maybe the 18th century when so many people were satirical? Almost any era. I mean, I, I think it doesn't matter. There's always an enormous amount of things to be annoyed at, no matter when you live. You could live in the 16th century, you could live now, you could live 400 years from now. I'm sure that, you know, that there are plenty of things to be annoyed about. I don't think it matters, really. And what about different societies? You, um, you seem to be a quintessential American from what you said earlier. You're proud to be one, and you love everything about it, although I doubt that. Um, are there other societies that you feel would lend themselves to your pen? Oh, yeah, yes. Um, I think almost any place you would find yourself, that's what I was saying, you know. Uh, or any, any society that's uh, civilized to the point of being ridiculous. You know, for instance, there might not be anything very funny to write about in the middle of a desert or something, but mm. wherever people, um, wherever people gather, uh, I think it would be things funny to write about. I, the, I'm writing a novel now, and it, a fair amount of it takes place in Europe, um, uh, a very entertaining continent, I think. <laughs> well, uh, where in Europe? A lot of it takes place in Paris, a very tiny amount of it takes place in London, uh, some of it takes place in Italy. Very cosmopolitan. Now, what is the I'm an international type. Have you lived there? Uh, fortunately not, no. What are some of the difficulties you find in writing a novel as opposed to a short piece? Uh, it's longer. That's the major difficulty. Uh, but also but that's the advantage. But you've written books of short pieces. Is that different from writing a similar length book? Oh yeah, it's much different. Because when you write a piece, when I write a piece, I write it all at once. You know, I sit down at the desk and until it's finished. And so you have this, um, perhaps, uh, false, but you have a sense of accomplishment. With a novel, it just, you know, it sprawls. But I, I, it has advantages, too, that it's longer, because it's not as distilled a form. And it's easier in a certain way, because dialogue, which is, for me, uh, the easiest thing to write, you can fill it up with a lot of talk. You know? And uh, also, you can be more honest in fiction than you can in nonfiction. You're not honest? I'm honest, but you can be more specifically honest in, uh, in fiction than you can in nonfiction. Without quite naming names. Right. Without at all naming names. You know, this is not, my novel is not a Ramona Clay. You're not going to be able to look and say, oh, this is so-and-so and this is so-and-so. Um, but you can take specific things from people that you can't do in the kind of writing I do. Because I, I in the more um, immediate pieces in, in, my, in the books I've published, I usually write in the first person. Yes. So that I'm always espousing my own opinion. That when you have a novel, um, you can have uh, people who, you have targets right there instead of having to make an abstract 
target. Now, the humor in your short pieces is very distilled, and can you sustain that over a, a form as long as a novel? No, that's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, though. That's the advantage of it. You don't have to. And this will be a very short novel, you know, but it'll just, but it's, it's just that it's all the piece. It, it won't be any longer than either one of my books and pages, but it's just that it's all one mm -hmm. thing, which is difficult for someone who writes funny things. So you don't like taking part in dialogue, but you do find it easy to write? Yes, because when you're writing it, it's a monologue. If you're schizophrenic? Um, no, if you're a writer, which you may think is the same thing. Yeah, I would think it would have to be. How about plays? How about them? <laughs> would you like to write one? Um, I would like to write a play in paradise, um, however, not in real life. Um, I've, I don't, I, I don't, I don't go to the theater. I really loathe the theater. I feel instantly like I'm in prison. You know, the thing about the theater is that when you walk into the room, you know they're going to be actors, for sure. Not like at a party where there might not be some. Yeah. Um, and there aren't any, I was talking about this with a friend of mine who is a playwright yesterday. There are no actors or actresses um, who can say funny things anymore. You know, I think Unless they, they have the script. No, I mean, they can't, they oh, can't do the dialogue. I, of, um, oh, that's not true. Oh, it is true. There are no American. There are no American actors. You're limiting it already. I'm yes, because there's only one actress I can think of who can actually talk like that, and that's Maggie Smith. Um, there are no, and there's certainly no young American actresses. This is because of method acting. I'm told Elizabeth McGovern does comedy beautifully, for instance. I know I can think of. Oh, there's so some who can do comedy, but they can't do this form of comedy because they have no interest in the words anymore. It's method acting that did, that did this. They told an actress, "What does it feel like to be a rock?" Who cares? You know, but can you say a funny line? You know, Rosalind Russell Well, I is think great a good actress that. can. I think, no, I think a certain kind of good actress can. Mm -hmm. Ones who don't think about how they feel and pay attention to the words. And actors are now trained to think about how they feel. They're trained in terms of, you know, motivation and all this. Who cares? I don't care why an actress feels a certain way. It doesn't, the actress doesn't have to know why the actors do this. The actress has to know how to say something. And actors are not trained like that anymore. And that's why, you know, there used to be people who did this. It wasn't that they intrinsically were more talented. If they were trained to talk instead of to feel. Do you think Woody Allen is funny? I think Woody Allen is funny in some ways. I think his writing is. I like his yes. books. Um, I'm not the world's biggest fan of, of all his movies. I like this movie, Everything You Always Want to Know About Sex. And the reason that I like that, the best of his movies, I like Annie Hall, too. Yeah. It's because it is very hard for any comic writer to write at length. You know, that's why I'm having trouble with the novel. And he... And everything I was wondering about sex it broke it up into a lot of pieces, which is much better for him. Also, he puts much too much human warmth and emotion in his work. You don't approve of that? No, it's not funny. It takes all the funniness out. But it makes the funniness real. No, it makes people like it. That's the difference. You know, it's audience pleasing, but it's not as funny to me. Well, it sounds as if the kind of humor you're espousing, we would accuse of being artificial. What about the movie Airplane? Now, the actors in that, the whole film was funny, so the actors delivered it in a funny way. Yeah, but it's a kind of slapstick, and it's also, um, it's a very derivative. I mean, it's obvious, it's a spoof of something. That's not mm -hmm. the same thing, you know, to spoof something or, or be, you know, uh, parody something, which is what it was, is a completely different form of humor. I occasionally write a parody, but it's not my main interest. You're talking about sort of elegant drawing room style plays. I'm talking about something drier than what, you know, people are accustomed to. People want, I mean, the reason people, people until recently love Woody Allen was because he puts a lot of, you know, love affairs and all that kind of stuff in, and people think <coughs> they're like the people in the movie. They, oh yes, we always have to identify with someone. You know, and um, I, I think to me that takes the funniness away from something. You know, it, to me, it makes it less funny. It's not that I think I do think Woody Allen is funny, but that it's a sensibility that's really alien to mine. You know, I don't feel that I'm like Woody Allen. I don't think in the same. way. I would hope not. And um, I'm I would pity first anyone. of all taller than Woody Allen is. Um, it's not. It's not the form of humor that interests me the most. Mm -hmm. um, now you've recently been to Japan to promote a book. You were translated into Japanese. Yes. Was that it? a very difficult thing to pull off. For instance, you've written an essay about um, Soho, south of Houston Street, and you were conjecturing having neighborhoods called things like not if so sure, which means north of Tiffany, south of the Sherry Netherlands. How do you translate that into Japanese? I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't read Japanese. It's one of the many languages I don't speak. Um, I just finished going over the translation of social studies. My translator came here. That was a metropolitan life that came out. It came out several years. It took it took her three years to translate Metropolitan Life into Japanese. Yes. And she's the foremost translator of American books into Japanese. So I just went over the translation of social studies with her, by which I mean she would say to me, what does this mean? And I would realize there's no equivalent in any other language, you know, yes. let alone in Japanese. 
So I don't know how it came out. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have to know because I don't read it. Well, I did a lot of speaking engagements there. I spoke at a lot of universities when I was in Japan. Um, and I had an interpreter. I would speak in English, and then for about five minutes, and I would stop, and the interpreter would speak in Japanese. And they would laugh. And they but laughed? I, but I couldn't right tell. Place. I don't know what place they were laughing at, which I found very frustrating. I didn't know when they were laughing. They're also almost inordinately polite, so they may have been laughing because they know they're supposed to laugh. I think maybe laughter is not polite in Japanese in Japan. Um, that kind of laughter is. If, if someone says, this is a funny, you know, they're very orderly people. Uh -huh. they're, they're in fact quite Germanic people. And so if someone, an authority, by which I mean a person standing on a stage of a university says, this person is funny, they laugh, believe me. Uh -huh. They're very obedient. Now, I'm also curious about the fact that you come from a family of furniture makers. And I wonder if the gene is carried on at all, if, if furniture making is anything like writing funny pieces. Um, and not to my knowledge. I don't myself make furniture, so I'm, I don't know whether that's true or not. There's uh, the carving of the piece, the um, organization... Well, my father was an upholsterer. He wasn't there. He didn't make the hard. Oh, excuse me. We, we have to stop. Thank you very much for being here with us.